All right. Well, we're going to do a reading through the Bible series. And one of the things that we wanted to uh, focus on were the Gospels. And so the particular Gospel we're going to start off with is the Gospel of Mark. And um, Mark is believed to be the first of the Gospels out of the four to be written. It's one of the three synoptic Gospels. And it really jumps right in uh, into the ministry of Jesus Christ. And so you will notice uh, verses uh, Matthew and Luke kind of starts off with the beginning, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the story of his birth. But here in Mark, it kind of starts off with his cousin, John the Baptist, and really runs right in to the three-year ministry of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to be reading from the ESV version of the Gospel of Mark. Um, and we'll probably just um, get through chapter one in this session and kind of explore some important things that are said in the chapter. So I'm going to start off with kind of like just reading um, and then we'll kind of explore together. And if you have any questions, you can put it in the comment section or, um, yeah, just make sure you subscribe, share, like. Um, there's just, a, you know, exploring God's word together um, and kind of expanding it, right? So it starts off with John the Baptist prepares the way. So we're, we're looking at chapter one. So in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Verse 4, John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Verse 9, In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. Verse 12, The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Verse 14, Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James the son of Zebedee and, his bro and John his brother, who were in their boat, mending the nets. And immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servant and followed him. Verse 21, And they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, 
convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. And they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Um, I think I'm going to stop right there up to verse 35. So, you know, one to 35. And so let's, let's kind of like go through this journey uh, together. And it starts with John the Baptist. And the importance of John the Baptist uh, is a fulfillment of Isaiah the prophet. So in verse 2, it says, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. So this is Isaiah, the, the John, and he's fulfilling the prophecy in Isaiah. And if we understand uh, Mark is just beginning with the role of prophecy and the fulfillment of Jesus Christ and the role that prophecy played. So Isaiah written about 600 years before Christ will arrive in the scene uh, basically tells you that this is uh, the Spirit of God is speaking. The Spirit of God is working in history. Uh, that now is the time of the fulfillment. The promised Messiah has now arrived. And before he's actually to, to do his ministry, um, his cousin John is the prophet that prepares the way of a voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord make his path straight. And we see the role of John the Baptist, why he's called the baptizer. Uh, he starts this ministry of, of water, water baptism, um, which we still continue in the church today. Um, it, it might be believed that uh, John was part of the Essene community because that was a ritual practice in the Essene community. Uh, this whole thing of ritual uh, baptism, immersing yourself in water. And in this case, uh, it's the Jordan River, right? The crossing over the Jordan. And really his mission was repentance, turning to God. And, f and he reveals what is going to happen uh, that there is one coming whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. After me comes one mightier than I. So John is pointing the way, uh, and he's attracting a lot of people from Judea and all of Jerusalem. He's attracting, attracting huge crowds, and he's stating this message, and part of why uh, Jesus gets his disciples was uh, some of the disciples that were following after John. And John is pointing to Jesus Christ. Um, and he says in verse 8, I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you uh, in the Holy Spirit. So there's a progression that's happening here that we are prepared. And, John, and Mark is kind of wanting us to really jump into Jesus' ministry, the reason why he's here. So he starts off with the, cha the chapter, in the beginning, the gospel of, of Jesus Christ. Right, the good news. What's happening? God is doing something, right? He doesn't prepare us by his 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 birth, uh, not with the angel Gabriel talking to Mary, but boom, right there, right in the middle, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He starts it off. And he starts it off with Jesus' baptism. And, you know, to reflect that we too, following after Jesus, right? Jesus is is the Messiah, right? And doing all the acts of righteousness, he tells John to be baptized, right? Which is described in the other Gospels. But here, Mark is, is really purposeful in just telling us what is important to getting on to the, the story, the, the core of the Gospel, right? 
Um, and it says, uh, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan, came out by, out of the water, and immediately the heavens were torn open. So here Jesus tears open the heavens. That means heaven and earth are going to meet. That means uh, what the ministry that Jesus is going to perform, and we're going to see the evidence of it. And Mark goes very quickly, what's the evidence of the heavens being torn open and, and the spirit descending on him like a dove. So being Jesus uh, being baptized uh, and, you know, heavens being open. This is a, a dramatic event, right? An event um, that's going to, show Jesus' ministry and reveal that he is the true Messiah. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son. So the Father is speaking, the Holy Spirit is coming as a dove, and Jesus is the word of God made flesh. So here you have evidence of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you know, three persons, one God, right? So you see the ministry of persons and one Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And just as you are being baptized into the family of God, you, you know, Jesus says, uh, baptize uh, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so we too follow this. We are baptized. And, and because of Christ, the Father could look on us that he is well, that we are his beloved children, right? Sons and daughters. With you, I'm well pleased because of the work that, Jesus Christ will do that Mark is going to unfold at the end. And so we, we're going to see the effects of the beginning of this ministry. All right. And the effect is one, the temptation of Jesus. Um, so the spirit, once he's baptized, the spirit drives him out into the wilderness. And we, we might think of, you know, Israel in the wilderness, how Israel failed in the wilderness um, how Adam failed in temptation. But here you're going to get Jesus has victory in his temptation. And it's no, in, uh, it's no accident that it's 40 days, right? So 40 days, very uh, symbolic. Uh, Israel was 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, women are 40 weeks pregnant before they give birth, Right. The coming through the birth of a nation will happen in those 40 years, all right? And they will finally go into the promised land. 40 weeks from the day of conception to your birth, all right? You are born into this world, right? So the symbol of 40 is very powerful, uh, you know, uh, 40 days of the, of the flood, right, of the cleansing. So there's also cleansing that's part of the 40 days. So birth, cleansing, all this is reminiscent of the 40 days. And he's being, Jesus is being tempted in the wilderness. So just as Adam was tempted in the garden, Adam and Eve was tempted in the garden, Jesus is tempted too, but he succeeds in this temptation. Where Israel fails uh, in trusting God, Right, Jesus succeeds. So all this is is reminiscent. This, the Spirit driving him to the wilderness, and and sometimes the Holy Spirit is going to drive drive us into that wilderness experience, and we must remember, right, to rely on what Christ has done. Christ has fulfilled the law. Christ has uh, won the victory over temptation for us. Right, He is our new Adam. Just like in the first Adam, right, when Adam sinned, we all uh, were impacted by that penalty of sin. And just as the scripture says, because Jesus overcame temptation, he overcame the power of Satan, that now we have the victory of life because of Jesus Christ. And it's interesting, uh, it says, and he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. So that there's, there's uh, in, in, in that temptation, right, in, in that um, test, Jesus passes that test, all right, and it says that the angels were ministering, 
God ministers to us. God sends his angels to minister. He sent his, the angels to minister to Christ, to strengthen him. And, well, I'll, I'll continue. So you're going to see a transition. So the transition of ministry. So at first the spotlight was on John the Baptist. And now in verse 14, you're going to see, okay, John the Baptist is arrested. Now the focus is going to change uh, in redemption history to the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, and it says automatically, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. The time is fulfilled. That means what God has designed from the beginning, from Genesis, when Adam and Eve fell, when he told, Adam, uh, when he told Eve that through your seed, um, your seed will crush the head of the serpent, right? So this, is, this time is being fulfilled. The time of God's calling where he says, through, through you, Abraham, all the nations will be blessed through your seed. So this is the seed. This is, this is the promised Messiah, right, from the king of David, right? The time is fulfilled. It's ripe. It's pregnant. Uh, the kingdom is at hand. Repent and believe, right? Repent, turn, believe, right? So who would believe in on? The words of Jesus Christ. And now what's going to happen is that on the Sea of Galilee, right, now he starts to choose his disciples. He chooses fishermen. Follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. So now it's time he's gathering. He's gathering together those who were scattered. He's gathering together to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and to become part of this ministry, this ministry of liberation, this ministry of freedom, this ministry of power. And so when we think about this, what does God do in our lives? God transforms our lives. God is going to call us to, be, to come alongside and in this day and age, in 2022, to become part of this ministry of the gospel, right? Of calling people to freedom and liberation and to the kingdom of God, right? The reign, the rule of God, right? Because this kingdom of God language, just like when we talk about kingdoms here on earth, right? You talk about the Roman Empire. We talk about, you know, United States is... is the leading country in this day and age, right? We're talking about kingdoms, right? Powers and authority. And now the power of God is descending. The power of God is being revealed and the power of God is unfolding, but it's not, it doesn't unfold or uh, expand its dominion through weapons of war, but instead through the power of the word, through the power of God's word, through his son, Jesus Christ, he's expanding the, the kingdom of God, right? Uh, his spirit is going out, transforming and claiming hearts and minds, right? And, and creating a kingdom here on earth. His rule and his domain, right, is coming to earth. And that's what we're excited. The good news is that God's reign is now descending and we're able to participate in this work. This is the genesis. This is the beginning, right? And we're, we're still 2,000 years later participating in God's work as he leaves and ascends. And we, he sends us out to, to proclaim that good news, to tell of his death on the cross, his burial and resurrection, that, that, we, that he has cleansed us, that he has broken the principalities and the powers that have bound us, but now he's given us a living hope that not even death uh, is the final answer, but the resurrection, right? So all that hope, all that, what, what humanity was hopeless in, uh, through Christ, we will have hope uh, that, and we know that God is working even in this day and age and continues to work. So, you know, this whole thing, fishermen he's going to make us fishers of men he's going to help you and equip you so that you could go out all right and proclaim the good news and capture pe people's souls and people's lives for the glory of god right and so when when he chooses fishermen it's it's kind of like on purpose because they worked on the sea 
they they uh, were experts in the water, uh, and their job was to catch fish with their nets. And now he's telling them, "Listen, I'm going to prepare you uh, prepare nets for you to capture men and women out on land." All right. So, and it leads into uh, when Jesus goes uh, on Sabbath, he teaches in the synagogue, and and. He spoke in a way that they were amazed. It spoke that it shook them. It spoke that they sensed that he had this authority, not like the scribes had, but a special anointing was on Jesus Christ, right? It's the Holy Spirit now being enlivened, right? And, and enlivens us to really speak into people's lives where they feel it deep within. You speak into their heart language deep within, and that's what uh, it's showing in Jesus's ministry that the Holy Spirit is talking through him and using him uh, to teach and bring the word of Scripture to life. All right. Bring, you know, and when when we too are called out in ministry, us relying on the Holy Spirit to to bring the words to life to the audience right, to, to those who need to hear it. And there's a thing of spiritual powers here. So a man with the unclean spirit cried out, right? And it says in verse 24, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? So they already recognized Jesus' power and authority that, um, that they're expecting him to destroy them. That means that they know that he has power over them. So it's interesting, you know, you had the temptation in the wilderness, but the wilderness was a preparation. And, and Jesus is showing us the preparation, the wilderness experience and showing us that when we do fail in the wilderness experience, in the temptation, facing fierce temptation, that he has succeeded for us in that wilderness experience, that temptation over Satan. Right. So we have uh, that's why Jesus could say, I have all authority, right? And so he has called us uh, with his authority to go out, right? And here you see that in the spiritual realm, they automatically know who's in, who's in charge. Christ is in charge. And they're afraid, right? They're afraid. And so Jesus has to rebuke them and silence them to not reveal who he is. Right. It says, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Right. So Jesus says uh, that and he uh, and the unclean spirit convulses the man. And Jesus tells him, be silent and come out of him. So already there's a command. Right. So Jesus is now revealing that the kingdom of God is to set man free from possession of unclean spirits. Right. That. Um, as Paul would say, we wrestle not with uh, flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. So the church, you, me, the church, the ones who depend on Christ for our salvation and depend and lean in on Christ for ministry and what he sent, the Holy Spirit, we also uh, proclaim liberation, right, from all what is unclean the unclean spirit. We battle with principalities and powers. So what is going on in the world today, right? War, disease, right? Um, claiming that for the kingdom of God, right? And so here, here you already, Mark is already identifying what the kingdom of God looks like. It's being free from unclean spirits. It's being liberated from that spiritual oppression. So whatever that spiritual oppression looks like for you, uh, Christ is bringing liberation. Christ is bringing freedom. Christ is breaking those strongholds. What, and, and they're amazed by this. What is this? A new teaching with authority? Authority means for, you know, from above that he is able to command these spirits and they obey him. He is able to tame them. Which is interesting because when he's in the wilderness, uh, you know, you never see this link before. You know, he was with the wild animals. Wild animals are not tame. They're wild. They attack. But some people have a gift. 
to actually tame wild animals, to, to bring them under subjugation. Uh, and here you get a, a thing of where Christ controls what is wild in the wilderness. And what is wild in the world, right? The unclean spirits, they obey him. They ravage and control mankind. But Christ is able to tame the spirits. And they obey, right? He's able to domesticate what is wild. Anyway, just uh, something, you know, uh, to think about, you know, when we talk about wild wild animals right um after that it goes into healing and why this is important because not only does he heal people from possession right not only do the wild unclean spirits right wild animals are unclean as well uh, unclean spirits but he he rebukes sickness, right? And he left the synagogue. And so from the synagogue, he enters the house. Now Simon's mother-in-law, right, Simon Peter, lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand, lifting her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. And so you see he has the power over sickness. So not only does he have the power over uh, evil uh, spirits, but he has a power over sickness. So showing the evidence that the kingdom of God is at hand, that the, there's power in the kingdom of God, that there's authority in the kingdom of God, that you, in hearing this message, so Mark is trying to make it clear that what we're hearing is not just um, propaganda that, let's say, the Roman Empire and the power of Caesar or the, you know, the power of nations with their weapons of war and their control of economic futures of peoples and nations and tribes. But here he's talking about a greater kingdom, a kingdom that penetrates the spiritual realm and is able to buy, rebuke, right? This man, uh, Christ is rebuking evil spirits. They listen, they obey, right? Like they have to obey, right? He, he, he tames what is wild in the spiritual realm. And not only that, fever, right? Sickness, right? Sickness cannot, Caesar did not have the power of the sickness, right? But in Jesus' kingdom, he has greater authority, higher authority uh, that's able to affect what is unseen, right? So any uh, temporal power, geopolitical power could only affect what is seen, right? They need a sword, they need a weapon, they need a gun, they need a tank, they need nuclear weapons, right? To So you could feel their authority and intimidated by what is seen. But Jesus uh, goes further. What is unseen, uh, he controls, right? Showing his power. What Caesar can't do, Christ is doing. And it's a greater kingdom, right? Um, and so fever, right? Fever and sickness. And then it says the whole city, right? So, uh, oh, th after that uh, evening uh, at sundown, they brought him all who were sick, all who were oppressed by demons. So those who are oppressed by demons, those who are sick. And the whole city was gathered together at the door, right? And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. So here he is liberating, freeing people from sickness and from bondage. And that's going to be his overall ministry, right? So he's showing this, that this is our ministry that we are inheriting, that Christ has passed on to us. That it's a spiritual battle, you know, that... The kingdom of God, when it's fully revealed, will be fully healed. That's why the resurrection of the body. The, the, everything, Jesus Christ will uh, reconcile all things to himself. He has won the ultimate battle. We're still in that progression of liberation, that progression of healing to the ultimate healing, the resurrection of us all. But here we're getting 
a sample, the first fruits of Jesus's ministry and as it goes out through human history. And so our hope as you link in, as you list, as you're leaning into the good news of Jesus Christ, as Mark is pushing this forward, who is this man, Jesus Christ, that he is able to speak with such authority? That this was a man 2,000 years ago, lived in a distant land called Israel, all right, uh, in Galilee, all right, ministered in Galilee, Capernaum, and, and Jerusalem. But we're, we're 2,000 years removed and over, I don't even know, six, 7,000 miles. Uh, so, but, but Christ is still moving hearts today. Christ is still calling his children today. Millions across the world. Millions are responding. Why? Because it's a move of the spirit. Why would a Nigerian, why would an American, why would a, you know, a Chinese person, why would an Indian confess the Lord Jesus Christ, a Jewish man living 2,000 years ago? How can they be emotionally connected if there wasn't something invisible, spiritual happening, connecting people to the presence of Lord? of the Lord, to the person of Jesus Christ, to connecting us to the kingdom of God that has affected, that we cannot see, but has affected us. So uh, pray for those who are, that they too will, that the gospel will speak into their hearts, right? It is an invisible warfare. It is an invisible, and and that's kind of like what he's pushing, right? Why push unclean spirits first? It is a spiritual warfare. It comes from the wilderness, from that wilderness experience being tempted by Satan, right? All of it, you know that this is a battle of principalities and Jesus is the victor. He, he has victory over temptation by that 40 days and he's giving a new birth, a new start of his ministry, calling disciples and then showing his disciples the power of the kingdom of God. That he when he leaves and ascends to the Father, he wants and sends us his Holy Spirit, wants us to operate in that power. So let us grab on to that. Let us grab on to the hope of Christ, what Christ is trying to show us. Let's go through this journey together. And how does God want us to reveal it in this day and age, in this generation that we are living in? How are we fishing for people? How are we interceding for them? How are we saying we're, we're lying? We have to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. God is our weakness. Uh, God is our strength and our weakness. And so leaning in, listening to this story, so we could get to see what God wants you to do today in ministry in liberating people and bringing the gospel in 2022 and bringing people to Christ. And so recognizing that there is a spiritual battle and that Christ has the authority in his name and the victory. And he has sent us out as his disciples. And if you do not uh, have not yet received the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him tonight. Pray to receive him. Lord Jesus Christ, please enter my heart. I am a sinner. And I need, I need you. And so, may we too go out. May we too look and see and grow in our knowledge of Jesus Christ and become disciples. God bless you and thank you. Next time we'll start from verse 35. All right. God bless.